Hey, 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 welcome everybody. And we're back again. It's the Mohawk Forex Scalping Team live. And uh, yes, we're going to be doing some more true scalping. You guys know how we roll. Uh, no messing around, brewing it out on these news events and the market opens and then we're done for the day. Um, we've already had a successful morning scalping the open on uh, DAX and now we're switching to the um, SP500 for the upcoming durable goods which you can see is about 10 minutes away and uh, then we've got some minor news with the Schiller Homes Index we've got the open and then to finish the stream will be the new home sales all high impact along with the consumer confidence for June so loads of data of which all the market is waiting for now more than ever the economic calendar is more important and uh, causes more moves than ever before as everybody the euro central banks the fed everyone is all data dependent and this is what we're looking at so now we're looking to jump in on all these news events and then trade the reversal as price on the whole comes back to where it starts from um, i'm reading it out we have a set take profit of around 50 pips or so five pips 50 points on indexes and gold uh, no stop loss because we're just going to get in get out if you end up putting a stop loss however ratio you think you're going to get spiked out as you do on news events what you're going to do is just get your entry point right let it hit the take profit and that's it get out wait for the reversal and we usually like to do three or four trades in one block and that's it job done and leave plenty of leverage uh, plenty of margin available as well and that's how it works that's the true scalping way um, we're using a two minute chart and a five minute chart with our built-in Mohawk Forex system that we designed here that all um, the members get access to once they join the group uh, we've got a grid here that gives us our resistance and support zones all based on H1 and H4 so we know where we are on a five minute with some automatic trend lines and some supply demand zones as well and then we keep it simple on the two minute we've just got a 220 moving average and we've got our supply and demand zones and as you can see at the moment and our RSI of course and again this has all been custom made for the group but as you can see at the moment the 500 same as DAX is our level of support uh, it's gone into kind of it did go into an over sold territory bounce back and it's retested and going to drop again like I say usually if there was no news event if this zone was broken we'd be looking to sell and if this zone looks like it's going to go up on our side then we'll take a buy once price breaks the the moving average but at the moment we're waiting for the news we don't want to be caught out in a trade which is what a lot of traders make the mistakes on is uh, keeping trades open or opening trades just around the news event because they don't keep an eye on the economic calendar i don't wonder why they get you know stopped out triggered out whatever the pending orders get blown up the opposite way we know how the manipulation works in the market um so yeah we're just going to sit back and let this news play out durable goods news up next let's go i see you can trade uh, us 30 on this you can trade cable on this you can trade gold on this my preference at the moment is the 500 um, because of how it's performing and how we've had these real you know nice pullbacks and we've had some nice drops from the highs as you can see even on the two minute these supply and demand zones were perfect and so I'm looking overall for it to be a bit more bullish and pull back based on our technical analysis here but like I say well we're going to get a further drop on the durable goods news so and then we'll just buy at the bottom which is going to be round about here you can see where I've got a heavy support zone if we drop a line on the five minutes where our system automatically puts in our heavy support zones so that's the bottom of it and that's a h4 support and obviously price is just set above it as it's always a zone but we know price might on the durable because news sink this level or this one and then we'll buy back but we'll see see what the news event does um it's predicted to be obviously minus month on month from uh, last month's one percent so a drop off in 
the amount of durable goods. Um, X defense is actually higher. Uh, X transportation it's about the same. So it's going to be an interesting one to see. Uh, and like I say, so far, a lot of these uh, news events, the, the kind of prediction has been way out, and that's what's caused such volatility in the market is that they're struggling to get a handle on what is actually happening out there at the moment um, with inflation and stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see what this is. That's why I don't jump in on a, um, a news event like I used to do before the announcement. I like to wait and see and join in with the move and then, like I say, try and catch the retracement. Uh, we've got Bloomberg on as well in the background. And they're going to be... <laughs> it's pretty much all of us right now. Go doing the same thing. They're going to be uh, covering the durable goods. We've got literally a couple of minutes to go. So good luck everyone. Uh, what am I going in on on this? Uh, I see markets as my broker. So we're going to go in on $1.50 per pip value. So that's 15, 15 lots, they call it on I see markets, but it's actually more like 1.5. Um, it's not the same, obviously you all know that. It's not the same as, as uh, Forex pairs, but it's $1.50 just over a pound per pip is what I'm looking at and the margin is about 255 so you could trade this with a $2,000 account $3,000 account uh, obviously if you've got less than that then obviously you scale it down accordingly right down to you can go down right down to one which is 0 0.1 on this so you can trade this with a $100 account if you wanted to I'm just going in at 1.15 today and see what we can bag. The market is looking bearish on 500 at the moment, but I do expect to pull back to the 200 again, retest this 200 before the drop, but we'll see. So we've got 1 minute 30 seconds to go. Let's see if we're going to get a nice boost up or drop down. Let's go to this line so you can see the actual move. If it rockets up, we can catch the sell for the 200 as the bearish momentum continues. It's a nice W pattern. You can see like nice double bottom. So, you know, technically we're looking for this, but we don't know with the news. We know that we'd like to catch people out. Good luck everybody, let's see what we can bag on this. 40 seconds to go, just making sure I'm logged in and on the right thing, it's always handy. Ten seconds. Let's wait for this move. Like I say, if you miss the move, don't panic. No FOMO. You just catch the pullback retracement, uh, as this one usually will pull back to where it started, unless it's massively out. Um, but we'll see. There we go. There's the drop. See if it's going to pull back. So look at the actual event. So it's better than expected. So that could be seen as a negative for the market. So we'll just see if we can pop some cells in. Let's have a look. Data. We're going to talk to Steve Stanley about I've been 
Luxembourg haven't announced it yet. There's your push up. So I'm waiting to take some sales on this. Let's see. Like Steve Stanley, watch <laughs> the capital goods orders, non defense, ex air, also coming in stronger than everything, all stronger than expected. Let's watch this push up. Anticipation for that, and then uh, shipments come in at uh, two tenths. That's uh, bang on what was the uh, consensus of economists surveyed by Bloomberg. So, right now, I'm looking for the revision. You can see where we're going to hit our trend line and our VWAP here. Given the fact so, I'm just going to load in the cells as we go around. Let's see. Stronger than anticipated, and that maybe uh, helps with that. Uh, of a, soft a little bit of a yield response here. The 10 year yield 3.73%, a little bit higher yield at their further curve inversion off the disinversion of the last 24 hours. So better than expected. My head spinning 297 uh, basis points. It, 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 there's a modest reaction. But Mike, let's sell forward here to your work later this morning. This housing data is actually pretty important today, isn't it? Well, it's interesting because new home sales are only about 15% of overall home sales, but there's no homes for sale. So watch so, this. Uh, I was just talking, I was down in Florida yesterday talking with a real estate. Let me see where it's going to go, or if it pulls back now, where it pulls back higher. On that side, offsetting some of the damage that's done by the Fed raising rates. But new home sales, there's a big backup in uh, new home sales. Uh, we know that uh, builders went into the apartment building. I say it was uh, quite a surprise there. Look, it was 1.7 to minus 3%, 0.6, so yeah, overall very good. Like I say, that can be seen as bad for the markets, but they're just taking some, pushing it high at the moment, so we'll just wait and see. Watch the RSI. With Santander US so as we see that move. He's outdone himself with a mid-year review of our housing market. I'm just going to start with one observation. See, congratulations on this superb note of clarity. New home sales were 10, and now they're 14% of the market. New home sales are up 40% as the size of the market in this crazy pandemic we're in. It's completely unusual. Right. It is. And as Mike said, I mean, it's really I think the genesis here is the, the backup in mortgage rates. Right. Because if you're if you own a home, you're sitting on a three percent mortgage. Let's see how high this gets before we get a pullback. It's a nice kind of second leg, as you can see. Higher. If you have to move, you move. But if you don't have to move, you stay. When does that break? What is the catalyst that Santander sees out there that will change the odd housing market? Mike McKee just saw in Florida. Yeah, I think it's just going to take time for people to to get used to higher rates. Um, I think we're starting to see that a little bit in terms of the new home market. Um, you know, there was a period of time last year when people were just stepping back and saying, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to buy a home right now because mortgage rates are too high. And I think now people are realizing that maybe this is the new normal. So you still have this dynamic. So we can take some sales if it hits that 200 moving average as well. Uh, just watch it on the five minutes so you can see the five minutes going to hit that uh, baseline and the trend line and then we've got some resistance up there as well it should be probably the same as where the 200 is just below actually if you just put a line across it like you can see we've got a zone there activity was was falling at a 25 percent annualized clip it was subtracting more than a full percentage point from gdp um all of a sudden in the first quarter it was down five percent so still negative but only subtracting two tenths from GDP. It makes a big difference. Uh, the overall economy, and I'm going to look at this from the point of view of the durable goods orders we just got out now, uh, has been sort of driven by consumers, and we've watched manufacturing pull back. But this is a relatively strong report. I've been going through it, and um, interestingly enough, a big drop in defense uh, orders because that is <laughs> a huge rise last month. But uh, overall, um, it doesn't seem to be. Watch as it hits that level. It's going to be interesting. Uh, what is the outlook for uh, companies? 
happens. If consumers are hanging in there, do they turn around? It's getting tight. There's a resistance zone now. Maybe we better refill our stockpiles. So I, I think what we've nice seen nice W pattern formed, as you can see. It's been a bit of a breather on that front. Uh, business investment and equipment was quite strong from the early days of the pandemic, much to the surprise of everyone. I think everybody thought there'd be a big adjustment there, and it was. It turned out to be pretty brief. Um, and then we saw strength throughout 2021 and into 2022. And the last few quarters have been softer. Um, but as you mentioned earlier, we had a good number in April and now another good number in May for the core capital. So you're reaching that 200. So we could have got buys in um, and in front of the buys. So because I'm looking at the bigger picture of the market, retracing, carrying on this continuation. This is just the news and then down. So all the loading the sales. Because what it's shown is that there's kind of a division of opinion amongst manufacturers. And it depends, of course, on what sector you're in. But about half of them felt like we were going to get weak first quarter activity because people were just adjusting inventories and getting back into line and the other half was more worried about a, a more persistent decline. And then we'll just wait. Uh, we'll put the sales in the, the top and we'll just wait. Some, you know, validity Our size getting up to 75. These orders numbers coming back in the last couple of months. Well, are you optimistic then about GDP for the rest of the year? Uh, a lot of people are still thinking we're going into recession in the third or fourth quarter. Yeah, no, it feels like the uh, the consensus call on the economy for the last, I don't know, 12 to 18 months has been we're going to get a recession next quarter. And the data is going to go further and further. And, 200. Uh, yeah, I noticed the latest uh, Bloomberg monthly survey of economists that got pushed back another quarter. Three to four. Um, but, yeah, but I just, I, no, I mean, I've been all along, I've, I've been of the view that the economy was going to prove more resilient, and it has, and I think it will continue right. to do so. Um, but it's, if you look at GDP, if you look at the components right now, it's an interesting mix because you do have areas of weakness. We talked about housing, we talked about business investment and equipment, but at the same time, not only is, is the consumer strong, you've got- Now we'll just sit back and wait. Because state and local governments are still spending, you know, their, their excess cash. Uh, you've got a, a, a boom in um, construction and like manufacturing facilities. Part of it is the chips sector, but, but even more broadly than that, so there's a lot of cross currents right now. Um, that you know, if you and I were sitting at Davos on a panel, and Anna Boten was out in the audience, she'd raise her hand and say, Mr. Stanley, you work for me. I have a question. And we would take Anna Boten's question. Absolutely. And she would say, what is the technology overlay right now on the two Americas out there? Mike McKee's been brilliant about this for 20 years. There's an America out there that's getting crushed. So I've got my TP set at about 50, yeah, 50 points, 5 pips per trade, so let's let that fly and see. See what happens. Uh, now, while that plays out, let's have a quick look at what happened this morning. Uh, our Asian cable trade was successful. We got 10 pips, we set our Asian line, and price came down right on the spot. Uh, could have held on, but I go for 10 pips, you guys know that, and not being greedy, just two or three trades in 10 pips. So that was a winner on cable this morning. And then the breakout on the UK 100 was also successful. We set our line there and uh, we had, um, we've got a trigger to our trade here at uh, 10.05. I usually don't like to leave it much more than three hours after I've set it if it doesn't happen. I don't take the trade. So that was a good one. Um, 10 and then again we uh, bagged 10 pips it says I had 19 I took 10 and that was it but actually it went all the way down to 19 pips uh, 19 190 points but I just took 10 again on UK uh, on the FTSE 100 so two good winning trades that are very mechanical um, that I teach as well uh, you know nothing groundbreaking about these but what we have got is our RSI which really helps to confirm an entry point for the trade and if it, and it identifies very well if something's a breakout a, a false a false breakout I should say you can see here the trigger our trade we entered a sell here why our RSI was well below the 50 well out our neutral zone well below our RSI average so that's as good as you can get one to almost a one to one and we were, we were in there we got 1.4 to one so that was a good trade and uh, same again on the cable, it happened straight away where we triggered the trade. Look below, RSI was red outside the neutral zone. That's fine. If you missed that and it flicked back, then you could have gone in here on the next candle where it was red RSI and then take the 10 pips. So that was a good, happy with that. 
this morning on uh, both those kind of side trades that I like to show everybody. For people who haven't got the time to sit at the charts, who like something more rigid and strict every day that they set on, I like to do a one to one on these. I say I go for 10, 10 pips. That's all. If you want to enter two or three trades, you can do. Um, yeah, so that's a good one to uh, to trade as well that I teach in the group. But they were both winners today, so that was a good start. So that backed up with DAX, put us in a good position. Uh, right, back to our watching here. You see we've got our oversold zone. We've got some resistance here, as we said. Uh, let's see if some of our sales are going to be triggered now and uh, let's see how this works out and pulls back. And I think you're you're saying a little bit of the same thing on the rent side where rent what we were expecting. So we did one, two that a decline. It was certainly wasn't a bust. Um but home prices yeah, we had 20, 20 trades this morning, uh, 4 losses, 16 wins, so that was good, that was a good start all on DAX and with the pound dollar and the FTSE 100, so that was good. So like I say, this might not play out now, we're going to wait for, we're going to get the Schiller Home Price Index coming in about 15 minutes or so, that will help either push things higher or bring a reversal then we've got the open so uh, and then the new home sales is the big one um, with all consumer confidence in an hour or so so we'll just see how this plays out this is there's not Lisa filling it for John. We, we have not had a pharaoh signing yet. He's on one of the unpronounceable islands over in Italy on a, on a well deserved uh, assignment, is as well. What we've got is this could nice range now a little bit until the open sit on this support of a percent. And we say good morning here, Michael McKee and Tom Keen, Lisa Bramwell. So I was going to go and grab a coffee. Uh, everything is in play. We'll just uh, be back in five ten minutes and uh watch this uh, Schiller home news at in 15 minutes so back in a sec grabbing a coffee the ugly mary itzkia i think is how they uh, as my you've been there no doubt yeah i need to get a life <laughs> mike i want to talk about what we saw in adjustments today from ellen zentner at morgan stanley do you anticipate lots of mid-year adjustments by economists as they get out front of the july and then the september meeting well, I think the, the adjustments may come more slowly. There are people who just j want to jump on a bandwagon. But if you're watching the data, it's it's going to be about do the inflation numbers and the jobs numbers come in as the Fed expects. And I think the jobs numbers could be a real key. July 7th. If, if we get a big late. increase in unemployment like we did yeah. last month, then that raises questions about whether they need to <coughs> tighten more or not. Uh, <coughs> they seem to want to, so I mm -hmm. would bet that they will. But at this point, um, they're still somewhat data dependent. And so right. when you're making a call, you're suggesting the numbers will come in as the Fed right. expects. I have a sentimental bias at 9 a.m. here, folks, in 20 minutes to the work of Robert Schiller of Yale University and someone truly iconic in American economics, Carl Case at Wellesley, uh, in, in what they did with the Case-Schiller Index, the S&P CoreLogic, I'm sorry, it's the Case-Schiller Index. Mike, it's an important data point today of flatness, isn't it? Well, it'll be something that economists are watching because they want to see where home prices are going and how that's going to affect those inflation numbers we care about. We also get new home sales at 10, and that has a price. Can places change us? What if every moment was a milestone? Here's to those who never stop wondering. On the line, you interact with the crew and you customize your meal. We've got this separate make line and it's digitized, and so the orders come in and they're they're really kind of staged so that if you say at noon, I want to come in at one o'clock, we hold that order and we will send it to the crew like maybe 10 to 1. Right. So it's ready right when you pull up your car. How do you manage these kind of two different staffing needs, right? Yes. And making sure you have the right amount of people yes. at the at the right right time. We spend a lot of time uh, projecting sales. Uh, a lot of it is, you know, it's part art, part science. We're trying to bring more science and more AI into it. Because yeah. if you get the right sales projection, then you know exactly what your sale, what your staffing needs to be. So if you get the sales right, you can get the entire restaurant staffed perfectly. With just a couple people, 
our, our average restaurant now does about um, over a million dollars per restaurant in digital sales. BSO Now is your online home for weekly Boston Symphony Orchestra and Boston Pops performances. See new concerts that go behind the scenes, plus acclaimed archival concerts. Visit bso.org slash now, where the music plays on. BSO season sponsor, Bank of America. It's going to be probably a softer landing um, in that camp. And um, the Fed's in its uh, statement, while it did not increase rates, was relatively hawkish because they added the potential of uh, having one more 50 basis point increase later this year. But the markets have not quite bought into that. The right person at the right time. That must mean it's a conversation with David Rubenstein. Afsana Beshloss is one of my favorite people in the world. She is prodigious in knowledge of international hydrocarbons. This is exceptionally well-timed. From Rock Creek, Afsana Beshloss with David Rubenstein. Look for that tonight at 9 p.m. An important conversation, and in hindsight, even more important given the uproar that we see in Russia. Belarus and Ukraine. He is with the Carlisle Group. David Rubenstein joins us this morning. Uh, David, I literally got goosebumps. She is just the perfect person to talk to. Tell us what Ms. Beshloff brings to the table. For those who don't know, Afsana Beshloff is an immigrant from Iran. Uh, she was educated at Oxford. She was the treasurer and chief investment officer of the World Bank and subsequently started her own firm called Rock Creek, which is now uh, probably the largest woman-owned investment firm in the United States, certainly the largest woman-owned firm by a woman who's an immigrant, uh, managing about $17 billion. Afsana is involved in a lot of uh, philanthropic activities as well on the board of the Council on Foreign Relations, Rockefeller Foundation, chairman of the PBS board and so forth, uh, PBS Foundation board. And she's uh, really very insightful about where the economy is going, but she's investing this $17 billion on a daily basis. She's really... Uh, actively involved in the markets and uh, she has a very good knowledge as well about uh, the energy world because that was what she yeah. first studied when she was at oxford right, i'll say she's really quite good at it in conversation after conversation over the years and david rubenstein just in the last 24 hours we've seen lawrence fink i believe over in china with the world economic forum not backtracking but finessing the new esg message to me dr beshloff is hugely focused on the realities of hydrocarbon. What were her thoughts on climate change and on this recalibration of ESG? Well, her view is that the energy transition is underway, obviously. It's not going to be happening overnight. On ESG, she's been a big believer in ESG and is very focused on it. Um, clearly, there's pushback now. But in the end, I think it's trying to you know, put your finger in a dike trying to stop ESG from coming forward. Many people around the world are not as worried about the politics of ESG as many people in the United States might be. And as a result, you're seeing in Europe and other parts of the world a real concern about ESG and the need to be more sensitive to environmental concerns. <clears throat> and Afsana reflects that because she's really a global citizen in many ways. She's lived in many different places and invests all over the world. She's in Washington, as are you. It's a cutthroat job environment. What is the distinction of Rock Creek and their shop as they try to keep, find, and retain uh, outstanding women employees and managers? The firm has about 50% of its investment professionals uh, and employees are, about, are women. Uh, there aren't that many investment firms with that higher percentage of that size. It's a very large firm at this point, managing, as I mentioned, $17 billion. So it's been a bit of a struggle, I would say, to be an immigrant and to be a woman trying to build a firm like that. Um, I've known her for a while, and briefly she worked at Carlisle, I should say, 
and before she started mm -hmm. her own independent firm. And I, I would say that uh, uh, she's known to many people around the world for being very smart, very articulate, and, uh, and, and very conscious about the importance of ESG. Um, I should also note for those people that recognize the last name, her <coughs> husband is Michael Beschloss, who's a distinguished presidential historian. Oh, he's not only a distinguished presidential historian, but David, let's be clear, her husband has kept Twitter sane here in all the uproar. He's a national institution with informing the public. Hi all, and we are back. And yes, we are in profit. So I hope you all caught some of those lovely trades on this drop. Look at that, reversing back, just as I said. That's where she loaded in all of your trades. So I'm just going to post that in a second. Just closing some positions now. Brilliant. So we made about 300 bucks there. It's uh, going to post results of the team into the group. There you go. That's what true scalping is all about. Just waiting for that reversal. We'll go again in a minute as well. Um, so that was, so that was uh, so we're up 543. Brilliant. So we took a load of positions on that. Sales. Played back nicely. RSI is crossing back over our average line, which is good, so we might get some more sales yet. Uh, there was a nice pullback. Let's see if we can get any more on this. That was a good. Just shows you, like I say, if you miss that initial move or you're unsure about taking the mission move, just catch that pullback. But you need a system like ours to show you. So uh, we cleared, what do we clear position to trade say? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Ten, ten, ten trades, ten winners there on that one. So I'm going to get some more, so I'm just going to close a few more here. So we've got another $30 there, just jumped in. Let's close those ones. Like I said, so we've got to do a lot of news events, majority of news events, you'll people are always too anxious to jump in on the actual news event where so you find the level and catch the pullback and that's the way to do it you know what's her view on a barrel of oil at one year or a run see how far this is going to come down we're just breaking on the five minute breaking the vwap we're breaking our trend line we've got 30 seconds to go on this candle here Touching that 20 moving average, so we might get a pullback. Got me coffee. Oh, that's nice. I can see RSI has just crept into the neutral zone. So just seeing if there's any more we can do on this. And we've got the Schiller home coming up in five minutes. Oh, it's like it's one top of the hour. Let's see what that does, whether that pushes it back up. And if it pushes price back up again, guess what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be selling in this zone around here. These are kind of the zones. This is the zone I'm looking to take sales in. Obviously, if it breaks above this area, then we're going for buys. And then we've got a pullback zone here. And we've got a pullback zone here before we carry on up. See here, look. We can draw a trend line if you want. Now, this is a nice second leg W. Alright, I missed it. Doesn't matter. Um, it's all about this break now. 
Uh, let's close on a couple of little trades there just for ten dollars. Like I said, I took the initial move and uh, it's sort of just small. As, as the price gets further away from a news event or an open, I lower my sizes down. I go in big, as big as I can on the initial move and then scale it down because you, the, you, you're losing the momentum of the news event. Now we're trading the pullback and waiting for it to drop into a range possibly. I don't know. Um, we'll see. Let's see if this candle finishes finish below the 20 moving average. So we could be heading further down, we'll just see. We're solid on the five minute as well. We're under the VWAP below the trend line, so we could be coming down in this supply zone again, the demand zone again. We will see. We'll just take one trade at a time now. And Bloomberg really aren't mentioning anything at the moment on this. So things always slow down, obviously the New York market isn't open yet, so this is why you get this kind of range now, we're going to see. Like I said, we've got 20 seconds left on this two minute candle, you can see it is, I'm zooming now, we can see it's wedged. Below our 20 moving average, nine seconds, and then we've got three minutes to the news, so. It's popping down again. He's going to retest that 20. There's a chance for some more cells here. Remember, we started here on the news event. Here's where the news event came out. You can see. So these are the kind of patterns you've got to identify, find the nice area of resistance. If you missed the initial move, you know, then don't worry, wait for that nice little pullback. Be looking if this breaks up, go for a nice double top and sell again, or it's a continuation here. We just want RSI to go red, and then on the five minutes, pop back into the neutral. It's going to go below that average line to be a bigger sell, further sell. So we'll just see whether this ranges around a bit. Uh, like I say, you know, our UK 100 trades were pretty good, they're all dud and dusted, cable and UK 100. Seven seconds left on this candle for it didn't. Here we go. Here's the news on the Schiller. So again, 1.7 is better than expected. The home price index minus 1.7 expected was 2.6. 1.7 over 1.5 so again let's see how the market reacts to this it goes up we'll look to sell again on the top if it just sells now we'll jump in we're kind of down to the open now team Now 
does this mean that when we get the new homes new homes will that also be better expected this is where sometimes it can catch you out because you'll automatically assume it will be because you've had these two you know all kind of related news events but the data doesn't always go like that and the market doesn't always go like that otherwise everyone will be loading buys in now on this before it even comes out so you've got to be careful And you can see prices now wedged against our 20 SMA, still below our kind of trend line and everything, so I'm still anticipating a push down here um, to kind of here. These kind of recession retail and the headwinds are going to catch up with us. Joining us now to weigh in is JP Morgan's George Jackson and Tony Rodriguez of New Bean. North Jordan, we just heard all of those skeptics about the wall of worry and how markets just are completely resilient in the face of them. Do you think we're heading toward a tipping point? Uh, I do think we, I think we are. Uh, I do anticipate a bit of a volatility uh, over the market. But the reality of the recession is delayed. Yeah, you've got another quick five dollars. Just took on that break there. Again, just doing small trades, small scalps now. Because I'm, I'm doing this because I'm live, I usually wouldn't. I'd usually just wait now for the open. But I'm just having a bit of fun, just jumping in and out on a few scalps. Um, So I can see where it's coming down, as I said, on the five-minute time frame. Eight. Or so I can see, look, it's just, is it going to go red? Now I see we're almost back down. You can see where price broke on the news event just here. That's where I'm thinking the TP might be on the sell. So I was entering one now. I might be thinking price is going to get back to here like that. Kind of set up. Stick on and see. We like to see this nice little range we do that we get before the open. So, but I hope some of the team also jumped in on those cells. Jordan, if that's the case, how 
how is the situation for bonds constructive, which is I know something that you've been talking about and many others would agree. How much have they priced in rates remaining around five and a half percent for a long period of time? Well, a July hike is pretty much a price thing. Um, you know, the challenge is when you look at year-end Fed fund futures uh, in the overnight in, uh, the overnight swap market, um, it's right at about five and a quarter, uh, five and a quarter percent. So markets are still, if the Fed gets two more hikes in, they're certainly uh, pricing some more aggressive cuts. I don't think they get two more hikes in. I'm, I'm much more in, in the economist camp. I do think they go in July and then have to remain on pause thereafter. But uh, I think bonds are going to out high quality core fixed income. I think it's going to outperform equities over the next three to six months. Um, you know, when I look at the tail risk, you know, do I think the equity market is going to continue to rally to 44, 4,500 in the face of, of, of a more hawkish bet? Probably not. But do I do think the Fed is at the, let's say, top of the ninth inning of a nine inning rate hiking cycle? Yes, I do. And we're going to see signs, as Tony highlighted, that growth is going to be coming down. Uh, inflation is going to be coming down. I think that's a June inflation risk. We're, we're calling for a 3.2 percent over year headline inflation number. That's some significant disappointment from the peak uh, uh, nine percent year over year number of last year. Uh, so, uh, you know, Again, we're in a range at the moment, so nothing happening here. We've got 20 minutes to go, just chilling, having our coffee, watching this. If we get a significant move, we'll take a sell, but we'll just wait and see. We'll see how this plays out. Stretch that across. Who's going to hold that? You want to be about there. This is the level here. I can see where we could get some more pullbacks but this is a good chance you know possibly tend to more sell but I want the RSI to go red ideally and then we're below the 200 we're below the 20 <coughs> we'll come back up into this zone then we'll retest for a retest and we'll put some more cells in but as you can see the patterns look at that, the beautiful double bottom, W, second leg, bang, and now we're coming up for that M pattern. So if you're drawing, if you like your yeah, wave pattern scenarios, you know, this is what I love. We used to do a lot of this, and we still have it as part of our one of our strategies, but it's easy, I've even got an indicator that draws it for you, but and this is, you know, so I can assume that there's a chance it's going to come back to here before we have a drop down to here. So that's what it could be, you know. Or it could this could drop further down before dropping back up again, you know. Let's just give you an idea how you can draw these uh, the wave patterns and look for double tops and double bottoms. It's a good game to play, especially on 50 minute time frame. It really works well on 15 minutes. Uh, 30 is good but it takes a long time people would get bored and not wait for it to fall but on a 15 minute it tends to be very accurate you can just trade second legs Closer to three and a quarter percent, maybe a range of three and a quarter to three and a half. So that additional tailwind of fixed income returns, we think, positions them along with their very high starting yields here to provide pretty attractive returns relative to. I suppose you can see is up so far. Everything's up at the moment. Futures. Best opening six months to a year on record, but is it running out of steam? Joining us now is Bulldogs Katie Greifeld with a look at yeah, NASDAQ is a good one. Just have a quick look at the NAS at the moment. There's a lot of my colleagues uh, trade NAS. Very rangy on the. So we zoom out. Yeah, it's kind of pulled back from its highs. You can see there's a big drop there. Look, look at that. 
are pretty richly valued at this point, leading this rally. Of course, you're thinking Apple, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. On the other side of the trade, though, you have the bulls saying that this rally is starting to broaden out a little bit. You do have tech. So he's been pulling back, retesting, pulling back, so you can see where it's all gone. Such as materials that are starting to join in, and that's typically bombed out, retest. So it might break. We'll see, but I'm not trading as at the moment. I say sticking to. 500 and on this chart this is my pound cable trades which I love trading and we do a similar setup for the New York one as well they were the winning trades today on the FTSE 100 and cable Given its large weight in the index, it's always going to be driving the market uh, to some degree. Uh, but I think the outlook going forward is probably more sideways to potentially a, a bit of a volatility, maybe a bit of a correction in, in, in big tech. You know, the reason is, and even when we look at the earnings, it's been interesting. Over the course of May and June, you've actually seen net upward revisions for the next 12 months' earnings. And I think a big piece of that is markets are starting to look ahead to. 20 so, new homes, so the new homes one again, they're predicting. A drop from 4% from last month to 1 minus 1 1.7 and sales down from 638,000 to 675,000. So a slowing down in the market, which would be good news, bad news usually, but would be good news because obviously that's all to do with the interest rates hiking if the economy is slowing down. So if this is blown out the water the opposite way, we could see a significant drop in the market i think and consumer confidence also meant to be up which is good so it's going to be a conflict of interest on this one but again we'll just go with the movement have a look at the result after and see how it flies about how important earnings are this particular year are we seeing this is the data that is most important to watch more than economic data to really indicate the next phase of market development well you make a you very good point lisa um, i do think that earnings for this balance of this year <sighs> given the run that we've had and given where valuations are and what i do think will happen is that there'll be some support against seeing any kind of significant bear market because of the outcome of 24. When you're in an environment where the Fed tends to have to cut rates or long-term rates, as I mentioned, we think it peaks so they no longer are a big headwind for equity valuations. That's when I think you can see a more stable market in 24 with earnings that finally settle in and begin to increase in 24 versus our expectation for 23. But when you think about the challenges from last year of rapidly rising rates, growth challenges, a lot of that's in our rear view mirror and with the outlook for AI and the tech space in particular, we do think that there's some upside to stock as we look out in 24 but a more challenging environment as we move through the balance of this year. Jody Rodriguez, Jordan Jackson, both of you are sticking with us. Right now, let's take a look at the stocks moving ahead of the opening bell. Here is our own Abigail Doolittle. Abby. Well, Lisa, it appears that the S&P 500 is trying to lose its worst six-day losing streak going back to the end of April. We do have some stocks popping higher. The futures up ever so slightly, helping out. Meta Platforms up 1.4%. This after City set a street high price target of $360. That represents... Oh, so it's breaking out the green side, so we'll see. Let's get to this because we didn't enter that. We'll just see if we're going to be taking some sales in this zone again. Coming back into our zone again. Of resistance. So it's, as I said, it's a nice double top pattern. Perfect. 
good thing, I guess, for the American public. Uh, less lung problems, but it seems like healthier people not helping out Walgreens. Abigail, thank you. It is true. We should all cheer the fact that perhaps people are having less uh, viral issues. Coming up, all eyes on the ECB forum in Portugal. It is unlikely that in the near future, the central bank will be able to... Yeah, we just took a little... Uh... A little fifteen dollars for that little rejection. Again, I love just playing these little in and outs of any of these you know, major lines, whichever moving average you like, you know. And again, it's a quick fifteen dollars, something I wouldn't usually do, but just you know, hit it, reject it, jump in, get the green, get out. That's it. And then we'll go again. Simple as. Now price is trapped between the two, so again this is looking good. Let's let the RSI get into that overbought zone before you start loading some cells in. Sick, trying to smash through that zone. Just hanging on there, it is. It is unlikely that in the near future, the central bank will be able to state with full confidence that the peak rates have indeed been reached. Bearing a material change of up to our expectations for inflation, we will continue. Like I say, RSI is the key, either for cheekily taking something and going with the trend or a little reversal. So I was just asking me, saying, yeah, it could be 4338, let's see. But Christine Lagarde has a problem that Jay Powell doesn't necessarily have, and that is the fact that she's dealing with 19 different countries that have a different... Parasite back into our neutral zone. ...the so-called sick man in Europe right now. They're looking at inflation that is running at a higher rate recently than it has been. 6.3%, but look what they're expecting for Spain during the month of June, 1.7% below the ECB's target. So you, although core inflation is still running hot in Spain, you can imagine that there are... So you could have loaded more cells in if you want. I've already got some pending, so... Also comes down, Lisa, to a fateful Friday because everybody's looking at the inflation. 
inflation forecast. And unfortunately, the four central bank presidents won't be uh, having these in hand before they get to uh, their speech tomorrow. But uh, the Eurozone expected to fall a little bit, even if Germany is rising. U.S. PCE expected to drop below 4%. But look at Japan. They're expected to go up. Now, that's what they want. So we're going to have some uh, uh, discord. Uh, central bank news, I think, uh, tomorrow. And of course, the Bank of England is pretty much set on the course of having to raise rates with inflation as high as it is there. But it will be interesting to listen to, but I think the, uh, the main message for everybody is basically our current policy before long. Michael McKee, thank you so much. I'm looking right now, as distracted at looking at the Japanese yen versus the euro. Uh, and you can see just incredible weakness there on the heels of that divergence. Jordan Jackson and Tony Rodriguez are back with us. And as we do hear some of the divergent monetary policies around the world, Jordan, is your sense that the U.S. is a better or worse valuation just on a sort of uh, currency basis than what we're seeing over in Europe? that plane like that let's have a quick look what's going on futures mixed here head of open so if we'll get a bit of manipulation on the open I always love joining in on that everyone's looking to buy on the open we'll be going the opposite way strength story it was a 2022 story we've seen some stability this year we'd expect to see some weakness as we move through the balance of this year and into next year as the fed does go on hold while the ecb has a bit more to do and we think the bank of japan will also have a bit more to do than the fed and so that does lead us to uh, emerging markets as being an attractive bear in the market central banks there were ahead of the game in terms of addressing inflationary pressures and of course now the headwinds from that strong dollar begin to dissipate and from a tightening Fed begin to dissipate. So we think the story in the emerging markets uh, looks pretty good to us. Tony, just quickly here, do you think that central banks will be able to have their cake and eat it to essentially be able to hike rates even higher and still achieve a soft landing? They will if they only hike marginally higher. One more by the Fed, maybe two by the ECB. If inflation proves to be more persistent than our base case, then they have to go further, then they won't be able to have their cake and eat too. And I think our base case of a soft landing or of a mild short recession uh, will prove to be a little too optimistic. And I think we'll see a harder landing both in the U.S. and globally. Jordan Jackson, Tony Rodriguez, both of you, thank you so much for taking the time. We are about seven minutes here away from the open, and we can see a bit of a positive. T During the 2008 financial crisis, the stock market fell 37 percent, yet one. And then later, RBC's Lori Calvacina joining us at the opening bell with her outlook for the second half of the year. That conversation still ahead. We're just watching price trap between the two moving averages, so there's really no trades until we see a move, we see a break. Like I say, if price on the open goes up into that zone, I'm going to be selling, and if it breaks below, we're going to be selling. So my buyers are going to be short and swift if I do decide to take any. Um, you know, I've got a nice big zone of sell-offs to focus on. So price is going to retouch that heavy support zone of 4333, 4336, the zone. That's what we're looking for. You're so 
intimately linked to the future of the UK. What are you seeing when you go to branches and in the country? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of anxiety at the moment. Um, you know, I think the recovery from the pandemic five minutes to go, everybody. Good luck. Get ready. Make sure you're logged into the the right instrument you're trading. Rising interest rates with inflation. Those those are things that you know, peoples and families and businesses haven't had to deal with for ten years. So a lot of business owners today haven't had to operate in that environment. So it co is causing quite a lot of. Just going to sit on your hands and wait. Like I say, if anybody wants to learn how to scalp like this, then obviously you can join the team, uh, Discord, and uh, go to the website www.mohawkforex.com. Yeah, go to www.mohawkforex.com for those of you who want to learn how to scalp like this. And so a couple of candles away from the open. Let's see if price is going to do that nice double top as you can see. Pulling back out the zone again. So we're listening to the morning calls. Market's pushing up into that zone. Look, we're going to see a nice double top. Let's move it up here now. We're going to see a push up into the zone, and we're going to see a pullback. Love it. Remember we've got this and then we've got the news after in 30 minutes. If this pattern comes off it'd be a good example of a W to an M, you know, really nice. If we do get this drop on the open or the drop happens from here, it goes up and then drops and we get an extended second leg. But let's see if it's going to retest this 433 zone. That's what I'm thinking. There we go, 20 seconds to go. Good luck, everybody. Fifteen seconds, let's see, let's see what this happens. Pushing up, as you can expect. And we're open. Mm 
pushing up into that zone. One push higher, yes, that's it. Push higher. Beautiful, look at that rebound, look at that, it's going up into that sell zone, this is what I wanted to see. Let's see it all pull back, let's take some positions. Let's take some profits, take some profit. Taking the sales, taking the sales, sell, sell. Closing so many positions, come on. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Now we just got one loss for 235 on that and we managed to bag we're up to 801 dollars brilliant those results and again it's just as i said just take your time and wait for the pullback um which is what i did and i'll go again same thing beautiful look at that that's how you do true scalping team look at that push down beautiful beautiful look at it that's what we want Take some more cells, more get out, more cells, more cells, more cells. Great stuff. Perfect. So that's about nine hundred dollars there. Let's see if this push up's higher and we'll go again. Yeah, it's going to push up higher, I think. Say the double top. Yes, come on, push higher. You can catch all these again. Come on, go, go, go. Get into that design, demand zone. Come on, push up into that road. Come on, come on, get into that zone. Get into that zone. That's where we want when they get into that zone. That's where everyone's waiting. Uh, and a, and a favorite, uh, of in the tech name to Bernstein. The problem is that 
There's some news coming up as well. We'll hold on to these for the news. So it was a nice push up. We sold on the open, caught this pullback. Now it's waiting for it to go again. resistance zone here coming up to sell off as well RSI size 80 is perfect now perfect zone people are going to start taking profits Profit. Brilliant. Just print the results again into the group. So we took another 20, 40, 60, 80, another $200 nearly there. Again, took that sale. Let's just see if we get another price reversal. Remember, sell at the top. Let it, let it fill the wick before you get stuck in. In case it goes higher, no panic. RSI is 80. It'd be nice if it was 85, but it's not, so we'll just see. Got a lovely little zone there. RSI 81, yes, that's what we want to see. Yeah, lovely. Right, we're we'll bang on where I need it to be. So let's wait and see. Let's have a look. RSI is 81, 80. And we've got the news coming up in about 20 minutes and that will end our stream so we're about a thousand up at the moment so that's pretty good just going to see if we can capture any more wait till, like i say sell at the top beautiful look at that wait to go higher it's hitting that big four hour h4 resistance look that's what one you can see it on the five minute chart here look it's drawn in for you Profit, taking some more, taking some more, taking some more. Come on, come on, come on. Closing, closing. Oh. Just pull back there, managed to grab a few trades. We've got about another 100 books there, so I'm just waiting to see if there's any more pullbacks on this. Maybe it's just small trades and then we'll go again, go again on the news. Yeah, it's 
response to my call is that this recession just gets pushed into next year. I am comforted by the fact, though, that I think whatever this is, whether it's a recession or a growth scare, I do think it's starting. We've started to see some deterioration in the labor market. Brilliant. We're going in again, taking some more profits. Come on. Talk about, especially on the good side, you know, sort of talk about some of that incremental weakness having come through. Yes, big profits coming now. It's going to be another couple, two, three hundred dollars. The idea that this might just end up being a growth scare. But I'll tell you, Lisa, I think what's wrong in this whole kind of bearish recession needs to be. See if this is going to push down anymore. Stocks are discounting mechanisms. So we just caught another. You hit me click. We've got another load of cells on that. It'll pull back as well. More. We're flying. We're flying, team. This is true scalping. Let's just see if we're going to get any more. Love that little wick down, that little sell zone as well that we're in. Oh, size so 78, come back up to 80, doesn't matter. Still in that zone, we're still we're only looking to take sales because of how high we are on both the two and the five. Just gotta sit on our hands and wait. Let's see if we can be out of all the trades before the news. So if it gets that neutral resistance zone on the five minute, then we'll bang some more sales in. That's the daily pivot. It's high over overbought, so by the time it gets there, we should be 85. And we can put some more in. Let's see if it gets that high. See it's positioning nicely, got some nice rejection wicks off that. We know when price action gets to like this, it's either going to explode upwards or it's going to reject heavily downwards. Back into our zone there, look for the open. Let's keep watching. So we've got 50 minutes to go to the final trades, the news. Like I say, is the pending homes juice going to catch people out, the new home sales? Or this has been gold, is this going to be not good? Ah, is it, you know what I mean? You just don't know with the manipulation. What's that with the UK 100? Oh, it was still, yeah, it was still would have done really well. Again, look at that, could have held that. But we, we took what we needed to take from those trades. Again, around could be waiting, could be waiting for the, the news, but we're seeing a little zone here. Look, this is a zone forming. We're getting on a few bucks, then it's great.
Breaking through that low, and there we go. Right, let's grab some more profit. We've done it, yay! Perfect. Look at that, and all the way back down to the New York Open. Just how I said, this is true scalping, guys. This is how you do it. You stay strong, you stay true to your analysis. And look at that, we've managed to bag there $1,300 and uh, well happy with that well happy with that i'm just going to post the last few trades that i caught there um again so that's how you can do it like i say i'm trading the same lot size the uh, like i say one one dollar one dollar fifty per pip and there you go small moves with accurate analysis and knowing how price action works look at that price is all the way back to where it started and now we can get ready to trade the news. We'll close all our positions. So price reverses all the way back to the open. Back into that zone. Now if it breaks the zone, we get red RSI. Guess what we're doing? We're selling. So, and this is what I mean, so we can just play with this two and five minute setup. It's so powerful with our Mohawk Forex system here. Nothing amazing, it's just, it's, you haven't got to do anything. I haven't got to draw anything. You've got trend lines, you've got the support and resistance, you've got the supply and demand zones. All you've got to do is just sit, wait, and hold, and be confident in your analysis. Don't panic. As soon as you see them rejection wicks here, we knew this could happen. Look at that. Perfect. What a good day. Um, first day back, I didn't trade yesterday because I was away, so I've kind of done two days worth of profits in one session and all in the space of basically what one hour and 20 minutes. And we've still got this uh, news to come the new homes, which we'll, we'll do that in a minute. And then we're done for the day, so very, very good day, happy with that. And uh, we'll just watch this now. Now, you knew you were going to get a bounce out of the 20 and the 200, a bounce back. Are we going to get? A, are we going to get a pullback all the way back to durable goods news? Is the you know just amazing? Not price news comes all the way back down to the news. Open goes up, comes all the way back down to the, towards the open. I see this pattern so many times. It's very very rarely. It does happen. This is why nothing's 100 percent when the markets will just go pull back a little and go 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 go. It has to be a real where everything's lined up. The macro news. The stocks news, you know, everything is lined up at the moment. Like I say, we've got all the Russia Ukraine thing kicking off, we've got the inflation rates, we've got the little little news events. So there's nothing is a is a pure streamline in one particular direction. But overall at the moment I still think the five hundred is, is bearish. It will become bullish. It's tried to. But I think for us scalping on these time frames, um, you've got to know that. That um, so this is a good example here look again but i'm so pleased with that uh, i knew it would i just had to wait and it took four or five candles and then we get the drop back into the zone so we just sold here and as we kept coming down we just covered 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 and make sure we're out of all the trades by the time we hit the bottom of our zone because we know we're going to get a bounce like the bouncing ball oof, it's going to bounce and now we're waiting for the news to end our trading day uh, and then we're done. So we've 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 done basically we've done 90 minutes here in the US session, which is longer than what I usually usually do. And we did about 45 minutes, half an hour, 30 minutes this morning, and that's the trading day done. And that's our money taken. So happy with that. With a nice percentage on our account today. 
Well, that's even if you, you know, like I say, if you're going against the trend, but you've got to know when to place the reverse trades. And that's what I try and teach. And this is what the system helps you with. If you a trader that doesn't always wants to trade with the trend, but never, never does, because you know you see a move and you go, no, it's going to reverse on me any minute. I know that feeling. Then this is why I learnt the way to trade like this. So nine minutes to go and then we are done. I say I still think we're looking for more sales here on the 500. It might pop up a little bit more but I still think if even if we retest this zone we're going to come down again. RSI, you know, went red. Look at that. Look how red it went. It went red before even coming out of the zone. The such that was a power. That was a powerful move. Everyone taking profit. People loading in the bars on the open, and you know, people want to take their money. The institutes, and this is where it is. Bang, off the table. Then we go again. There's people waiting to buy. But look, look how accurate our supply and demand zone was. It was just perfect. It just was there in the red. I just loaded in my cells. I'm confident in the setup. I know where I'm going to be taking a profit before it gets into that zone, before it bounces, and that's it. And what it is is what it is. I don't do these, you know, crazy risk to reward things and the crazy stop loss and all that and tight stop loss. That's what gets you burnt out. You've got to ride the wave as it hits you. And we're going back into that zone. Like I said, if we get a break above here, guess what? We're going higher. Here's our daily pivot line. So we can zoom out and you can see this is where we're potentially going higher. We've got a lot of clear air right up, back up this area here, look. So, and the system will redraw the lines for you. It will redraw, so you haven't got to draw anything. RSI is not over the average yet though, we're averaging about 61 on the RSI, so. but I still think we're going to get some more sales, still think we're quite overbought for the pullback. It's good to watch this, you see, and you see how the 500 is made up, what's good, what's doing well, what's not. There's your pullback again. Look, oh, could have gone in again for a sell. Look at that. See, again hits our sell zone. Bang, should have got in again. Another big rejection candle. This is the kind of thing we live for, guys. Amazing accuracy on the indicator, and we should have gone straight in. My bad, not watching it. Doesn't matter, no FOMO because there's always another trade. On a two and a five minute, there's always another trade. This is one of trading it. You know, when you're on 50 minute, H1, H4, if you miss it, hey, you've got to wait a long time to get in again. Two and five, no. There's always another setup outside of even trading the news and the opens. 
So again, are we finally going to get a break of the zone, a true break of the 200? That's your 20, that's your 200. Then we're going down lower. We're going to hit back to where we were for the durable goods. Remember, this is where I said half an hour ago, price could come back down to is here. Right, so I'm not in the trade because I don't want to be trapped in anything. I'm just waiting. If there's no news, I would be waiting for the break here. But the news might be the catalyst that pulls it down. This could be a real cheek, a real counter. Is it going to be green? And then it's very rare we've had anything green today. Or is this going to send the markets down? So I get excited about it. you just don't know and you can't anticipate. That's why I don't do pending orders. That's how you get smashed out. Don't show your hand. Join in with the move. But yeah, we're still, we're still, I think we're still overbought on the 500. Still think we've got room to go down. We've got three minutes left. We'll probably feature this on Bloomberg as well. There you go. That's it. We love trading the jobless claims, as you know. Every Thursday, it's regular trade for us. So, good luck on the final trade. Two minutes to go. See, are we going to get a breakdown to this level here? You know, we're still thinking it could be four, four two even. You know, it could break well below this level here. Who knows? Fifty seconds to go, guys. Right, making sure I'm on the right thing again. Make sure we're logged in. We're all good. Yeah. Check, check, check. I'm not going to go crazy on this because we've already well, well up. I wouldn't usually, I would trade it, but I'd trade really small size. Um, you know, when we've made profit, I don't want to give any back. So I'm not going to go Lambo on this. It's just going to be a small, just to see what the move is. 25 seconds. You can check the economic calendar. There you go, look. So, like I say, it's predicted to be lower. Let's see if this pushes it higher or we're going to get the drop into this zone here, as we said. Maybe no moves at all. There we go. Consumer confidence is good, good, good. 12%. Wow, wow, wow. There's going to be a big move on this, guys. It's going to be a big move. Let's see. Wait. That's a big, big result. Wait for the move. Let's see. Come on. Look at it fighting.
nice rejection pushing up beautiful <laughs> Got ten dollars on the buy. As small and medium-sized businesses struggle, they don't present as much competition. What are you guys thinking about hardware, software? How should investors approach this thing called AI? This is Bloomberg Markets with Paul Sweeney. Let's see who's going to push down for a sell. All right, good Tuesday morning from the Bloomberg Interactive Broker Studio in New York City to our worldwide audience breaking economic news. I would be recorded, but we got John Tucker from our public and recorded. But some pretty decent stuff out there in terms of some home sales. Coming up, we're going to check in with Ira Jersey, Chief U.S. Interest Rate Strategist, to see what's happening on his interest rate outlook. We got the Fed uh, at the end of July. With yes. Dan Ives be got a nice little yeah. cheeky sell on that as well. Andy that was good. Ives, uh, but we're going to focus on AI. Let's post that. Andy that was about another 50. We got ten on the buy, but I got another. What do we get there? Ten, about another fifty on the on the sell. This is an eye opener. The uh, the latest data: new home sales fall seven hundred sixty-three thousand in the month of May. Uh, that is a big jump from last month, way above expectations. Yeah, okay. And month over month, up twelve point two percent. We were expecting a decline of one point two percent. Then with the conference board. I'll just go right to the uh, the present situation, Ooh. way above expectations as well as uh, consumer confidence, way above, really good. At 109.7, the expectation was for 104 uh, last month. You recall 102, so yeah, pretty confident out there. Uh, earlier, we saw orders placed with U.S. factories for business equipment rising in May for a second month. Now, as far as stocks, also there we go. So, like I said, the good news is the bad news. Obviously, we took a little bit on the buy, but I knew it would push down because obviously, if the economy is still good, consumer confidence is still good, home sales are good, then obviously it looks like there's going to have to be more interest rate hikes. Now we're going to get a break below here. I just want to see this before I go. Push down, I beautiful. I think that's what's needed in order to pull inflation back down into the two. Still, it is risk on today in the market. Walgreens Boots Alliance. Well, we'll keep watching that. And so, have a good day. That's took us to about 1360 for the day. Uh, so, well, happy with that. Um, we'll watch, keep watching this within the group. See if we do break into this zone. Oh, we're going to push higher then drop we'll keep watching it but you can see it's just a little little pattern you got to just focus on the on the charts you want to focus on don't get distracted look at price action look at the prices recognize the patterns recognize the areas of supply and demand and then you can do this true scalping nice and easy with less stress than maybe other methods but it's done well for me and it's done well for some guys in the group as well so um, like I say, go to the website www.mohawkforex.com for more information or click on the links below. Uh, give me a like and subscribe and I'll do more lives uh, as and when I get asked to. Um, but yeah, we'll watch this and see if we're going to get some more sales here. Look, we'll put that Holmes News as a jump up as it was and then it bang down of course because of our sell zone. So again, if you missed that initial event, that's what we did. You see, we caught the buy in and out knew we we're going to hit the sell zone and then bang and now is that going to happen again we will see um yeah we'll keep watching so well done say catch me on the next live stream and there was another sell let's see you could have jumped in on the sell i hope some of you guys jumped in on that our sell zone and bang um you know all part of the package that you get when you join the group so there was another potential trade there look at that sell beautiful 
Uh, so even though we're in kind of a range here, we're scalping, we're making money, we're bagging it. So, uh, but well done to everybody. And thank you for joining me, more importantly. And hope you get to watch this back and keep the art of true scalping alive. Um, and like I said, I'll be back on the next live stream. So take care, everybody, and see you on the next one.